I can show you how to do a background very quickly now um, and I want to show you that using the glycerin technique because a couple of you have mentioned how much you really love to do that. So we're going to use some pink, some yellow and some, some purple. She's like, no, I'm going to use some pink, some yellow and some blue. I've changed my mind. I'm a woman. It is my prerogative to do so. So I've got some blue, some yellow and some pink. All right. So with, um, there's a couple of different background techniques you can do. And I'm going to cut this piece of card in half. Here's my scissors here. Oh, I'm not. I'm just going to get another piece. Why try and, why try and be um, frugal when you've got a whole pile of card here to use? I'm not going to. I'm just going to get another piece. A couple of different ways you can do a background. Um, I'm going to show you the first way, actually, because it's, well, they're both easy. So I'm just going to show you them both, and then you can see the difference between the two using the same colours. So you'll get a different effect. So for this one, what I'm going to do is use my spritzer. And I'm going to use the perfume waft technique again. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a pre-moisten to my card. And all that's doing is getting that ready to receive some colour. So it's not a dry card, it's a moistened card. Okay. And then I'm going to take the three colours of ink that I've chosen here. So I've chosen a pink. And I'm going to scribble this onto my mat. You might just be able to see that there. I'm going to take some of the yellow... And I'm going to take some of the blue. And I'm going to use a little bit less of the blue because it's quite a dark one. Okay. So I've got that on there. My three lots of ink. Then I'm going to just give that a little bit of a perfume waft. So they're ready to start moving and reacting with the card. And then I'm just going to dip my cardstock into it. So dip it in. Give it a little rub around. Give it a little smooch. And then have a peek and see what's happening. And it's starting to mix me a beautiful background. So I can leave it like that if I want. Or I can move it around and move the colours. Or what I can do then is spritz them. To get them to move a little bit more on the cardstock. And have them move around and then just leave that to dry. So I can make myself some really beautiful, unicorn inspired, um, really pretty backgrounds really easily. By just mixing some different colours on the mat spritzing the card and then letting it dry. My advice with this is go larger than you need because then you can trim it down. So don't start with the piece of card that would be the right size for the project I'm working on. Go larger. And then I can choose from this background which bit of it I want to use on my project. All of it if I love it or just a portion of it. Um, if it starts to move too much get your heat gun on it to stop it um, because the water and the ink will keep moving until it's dry. So it'll keep taking different forms and shapes, moving around the card, doing its thing. So if you quite look ha like how it looks, stop that moving any further by just taking your heat gun to it and drying some of that water off. So you can see that there. So that would be my background. I'd trim that down and I'd be able to use it. So that's one way of doing a background. Another way of doing a background technique is using your blending tools and form, um, little foam pads. These are from Spectrum Noir 2. And I just need two or three of these. I'm just going to open up a new one. There we go. So I've got my little blending tools. I've got some glycerin this time. Now, with glycerin, if I had a pipette, it would be better because less is more with glycerin. You need a tiny little bit. Um, and so, if I say kind of a... A garden pea. There we go. That's all I need. So you don't need a great big pebble or lump of glycerin. You need a tiny bit. So this is more of a garden pea size, really. Um, and you can always add some more if you need it. But if you put too much, you won't get as good a result. And you're going to see what I mean by that in a sec. Then I've got my pink. So I'm just going to make myself a little palette down here. So I've got my pink. I've got my yellow. And I've got my blue. I'm going to do the blue up here out the way because it's much darker and I don't want it to contaminate these two for now. So I've got my inks on the mat. So what I'm going to do is take my blending tool, my little sponge, and I'm going to take a little bit of the glycerin. And you can see there that I'm only just touching the end of it. And then I'm working it into my tool. And I don't want 
a ridiculous amount. More glycerin just makes for a shiny, horrible mess on the card. What the glycerin's going to do, however, is turn this ink into a blendable ink. So you'll be able to move it around on the card and get that lovely, soft, diffuse background. So a little bit of the glycerin on there. Not a lot, because you don't want it to be shiny. So you see, all I'm doing is now that I've got the glycerin onto my tool just a tiny bit and then I'm dipping it into that ink that I put onto my mat how I'm able to bring this in now and make a lovely soft diffused background with my aqua marker how lovely is that and then I can go into the different colors I'm going to turn it around a little bit of glycerin on this side worked in go into the yellow now pick up the yellow and bring that in and you see now with my aqua markers not only can I do a really artistic pretty crazy background using the same colors I can do this lovely soft gentle diffused background by just using a little bit of glycerin and my blending tool and then just bringing it onto the watercolor card very softly how lovely and pretty is that and then if you need a little bit more of the ink if you've picked it all up scribble it down onto your mat just as I'm doing here and then you just go back in pick up a little bit more and bring it round and if you feel you need a little bit more glycerin you just dip it back in but you definitely don't want too much and you're just going to use that really easy soft blendable tool to get that, to build up the intensity as you work round how you would like it to look okay now I'm going to change that and just take um, the darker color blue so you can see what that looks like too. So you can see how you can do it with your darker colours as well as your lighter colours. So I'm just going to dab this in here. Work it in. Get that nice and straight on there. Work it into the sponge. Pick up the blue. And then bring this on here. And I can work that onto the cardstock in exactly the same way and I can overlay the colours so I can mix new colours on the card as well um, and just keep working it in until I get that lovely soft background all over. The choice is yours on the colours and whether you want to really build up the colour and have it really intense or whether you want to just keep it a little softer. Now I will be honest, can you see how I'm getting some lines? That's because the aqua markers aren't meant to do backgrounds like this. And by adding the glycerin, um, we're trying to make it perform as an ink pad. Ink pads will always be the better medium for this job. Um, and you will have seen our Harmony um, ink pads with me on lots of lives before. And it's much easier to do that with those. But if you've got your aqua markers and you want to do a background that matches, by adding your glycerin and then doing it with your tool, you can actually build up these lovely soft backgrounds. So both work. It's easier with um, an ink pad meant for the job, but that's not to say that you can't do it with your aqua markers if that's what you have at home and what you would like to do. And you see, just by going over and over and smoothing it out, that I actually managed to move those lines. I am getting fingerprints in it because I haven't got a bit of tissue paper, but you get the idea. So I can blend out a nice, smooth, soft background by adding a little bit of glycerin to the aqua marker if I want to. Or I can do as I did before and just do a really mad spritzed background that I would... It looks a little bit like, um, like a cloud, like an explosion, doesn't it? An explosion of pigment colour. It's lovely. That could be trimmed down and used as well. Two very different ways of using them. Um... Same, same product, but different techniques. Two very, very different looks. Okay, so they're going to come to you too. Um, you can do just a big wash of a background if you would like. And what I've got here is something that's just being pre-prepared with some drawing gum. So it's nice and dry, dry-ish. I did it just before we started the session, so I'm just going to give it another dry. And then I'm going to show you how you would do this yourself um, and the, the result that you're going to get from it. So I'm just dragging that over there, just drying it. Ooh. And then I'm going to use one of the images that I stamped earlier. And then I've got my little pot of drawing gum here. So drawing gum is basically a liquid mask. So this is going to allow us to mask out this image so I can do a colour wash behind it. So I'm going to uh, paint this on. So you literally just take the lid off the pot, 
take yourself a largish brush or a small brush. Really, really doesn't matter what the size of the brush is. It'll just take you longer to put it on with a smaller brush than it will a larger one. Dip it in and then just paint it onto the image. Now, notice I'm not following um, the petal of every flower. I'm just getting the drawing gum on there. The only time I need to be careful is when I come to the outline. So I don't want to go over the line because I only want to mask where I've got my stamped image. It might be better to do this with a smaller brush if you've got one at home, but this is the one that I've got here and the one that I've been using. Um, so I'm just going to paint this on. And I won't do the whole thing because you get the general idea. But we'll just paint on the drawing gum, onto the image, and then let it dry. Okay, so you can see how I'm just spreading that around. And you can see the blue, you can see where it's going. You can see the image underneath, um, but you can see where I'm managing to mask it. Okay, and to clean the drawing gum off your brush, you literally just tip it into water, dry it off on your kitchen towel, and it's done. Uh, nothing more difficult than that. And then pop the lid back on. So then you would leave that to dry. You can force it to dry with a heat gun. When you force it to dry with a heat gun, it sticks to the card a little bit more. So it's better to let it dry naturally. All right, so you pop that to one side, let it dry. Once it dries, it's going to go a little more transparent and you're going to be able to see your stamped image underneath, but you can see the pale blue and now it's not coming off when I touch it. Okay, so it's, I know that it's okay to use. What I'm going to do is get my big brush now and decide what colour I'm going to paint in the background. I think I'm going to paint some sunsetty colours. So let's go with that lovely golden yellow again. Where have you gone golden yellow? You're here. Marvellous. Let's go with that lovely golden yellow. Oh, there's a colour called sunset. That's helpful. Let's go with sunset. And maybe, should we go scarlet or crimson? Let's test that down here. Oh, oh I'll get that in a minute. Oh, no, not that one. I think I want crimson test it down here because I'm going to trim this little bit off at the bottom yes I'm going to go crimson oh or rose red oh flame red oh hello flame red let's try you oh better right okay so what I want now is to get some lovely big bold wash of a sunset background over the top of my lovebirds here so I could do that by adding the color to the card and dragging it out as you see me do earlier with a large brush or I can just paint the color onto my mat and then paint it onto the card this is definitely my preferred method i do like to put the color onto something non-porous first and then bring it onto the cardstock rather than committing to the cardstock straight away you can do either it's just my preferred way i'm going to get a clean pot of water so my other one's looking a bit cruddy cruddy being a technical term i'm going to moisten my brush pick up the color and then just drag it straight on Okay, and I can build that up by just dragging it on and painting it across. And then if I need some more, if I need to just get a little bit more water on my brush to drag it out, I can do that. And if I want to add some more colour, some more intensity, just keep adding a little bit more of the colour to your mat. Pick it up and you can layer it on to intensify that colour. Okay, so that's my red. Let's get all of that on there. And I'm a waste not want not kind of girl. So I'll keep going back until I can see that there's none of that red colour left on my mat that I've used, everything I scribbled down. Because when I clean the mat, I want to clean away the water. I don't want to clean away the lovely ink that I had in my pen uh, because that's too valuable. So there's the red. Then clean my brush. And now I'm going to go with the orange. So I'm going to do exactly the same. So just any of the small residue that's left, give that a little wipe. Take my brush tip, paint my orange on here in exactly the same way. Now I'm coming to where the birds are. I'm picking up the colour and then I'm just bringing that over here. But notice I'm going straight over the top of those birds. I'm not trying to go around them, through them. I'm not trying to trace with a fine brush. I'm just literally painting right over the top. I'm going into the red a little bit because that just makes a smoother, a smoother line, a smoother blend. Picking up all of the colour because I don't want to waste it. And then 
cleaning my brush from the orange just take the residue from the matte so I don't contaminate the yellow when I put it down get my lovely gold scribble that on here exactly the same again dampen the brush most most of it off pick up the yellow continue as I've just been doing but going straight over those little birdies there not worrying about picking out any detail and uh, also trace I'm picking out detail tracing around the outside of them I mean apologies so I'm getting that on here and I want a little bit more below there it's looking like a beautiful sunset that isn't it the colors stunning absolutely stunning and this is how beautiful the colors are in your marker set and how easy they you know when we're saying you can mix new colors look by just applying them like this and you know you see I'm going over the orange and I'm going into the red with the yellow that's taking all that color up there but that's that what that's doing is giving me a lovely smooth blend of color um, and making everything tie in so I'm getting that lovely ombre between them and that's just with a wide brush and for the lady I think it was Sue who said I'm terrified to try um, water colouring look Sue how much e could this be any easier if you tried a big brush and I'm just in strips well what I'm not doing is this that's a good tip for you so notice I'm not doing circular motions I'm literally doing big sweeping backwards and forwards on one side of the card straight along and off the other side back this way back this way back this way back this way that's what I'm doing and that's what you need to do to get these lovely smooth beautiful ombres keep going in the one direction and then just go over, uh, not the group, the brush, and um, and then you'll be able to see that that just brings that beautiful sunset ombre into existence. How gorgeous does that look? Right, so that's how easy that is. And you might say, well, that's really nice, Dan. What happens to the birds? They've gone all blue. You painted some of that funny stuff on them. Well, the mask has now protected that stamped image and white card underneath there so that when I rub it away, the birds will now be white and I can go in and paint them. But I've got that beautiful sunset background all around them. So I'm just going to give the background a little dry first. It does need to be a little drier um, before I do that. So just go around the outside. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Um, and then all you do is take your finger and rub that away. And so can you see how it's coming off from the card? Look at that. And then it leaves the bird behind. How fantastic is that? It literally completely peels away. And now we can just go and paint these lovely little birds. And so we're going to do these in green and blue. Um, and I'm going to get my little detail paintbrush. I might not have time to finish this, but you'll get a chance to finish it at home. I want yellow for his beak. So let's go in and paint the birdies. Paint the birdies. Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I know. <sighs> so you've got to get your kick somewhere, haven't you? I don't know where. Where did paint the birdies come from? It just popped in my head, came out of my mouth. I'm a liability. So we're going to pop some of the green on here. Um, and I'm just going to go beneath his chest there and I'm going to follow that all the way down and then I'm going to transition that with some yellow. Actually, probably should have done blue, but never mind. We'll have two different colour birdies. Um, and then with the green on my damp brush, I can drag that colour out. Now, if I want to tone that down, I can use a little bit more water. So you see I've been able to do that there, tone it down. Um, and I can add other colours in. Um, and I like to do that, again, from my palette. So I would put, and my palette is just anything non-porous that I'm scribbling on. So that's just my craft mat here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue. And I'm going to start bringing it in. So what that's doing, hopefully you can see, is toning that green down, but leaving a suggestion of the green behind so it looks like it's the multicolour feathers showing through. Um, so that's how you can do that really quickly and easily and um, I'm going to do the wing and I'm just doing this really quite quick and rough for you now um, you'll spend more time but it's just so that you can see how you would get the colour onto your uh, image that you've masked out and um, be able to colour that so that you've got a coloured image sitting on top of the ombre that you've just created. If you want to get a little bit more colour in, you can. Um, and I want to go maybe with a little bit more intense blue there. So I'm going to go with a darker one. 
scribble that on get some there we are get some more intense shade in his little feathers there around the top of his head see how you can start to build that up so if you look at it and you go hmm that doesn't quite look how i wanted it to look you just add a little bit more color in that's the absolute joy of watercolor you go well i'd like a little bit more so i'll scribble a bit more on my mat get a little bit more on my brush and there we go we've got darker wings now how fab's that and we've still got the bit of green coming through i'm going to go around his eye make him a little bit more darker here that round there and so i'm just adding the detail in now with the same watercolor markers just picking the color up from the mat with a damp brush and then adding it in and dragging it out could not be more simple we're going to do his beak yellow Ooh. so i'm going to add that color in there there we go little beak and then for his eye what color eye does a lovebird have does anybody know if you know what color eye a lovebird has can you possibly leave me a comment because i don't want to do it in a random color and spoil them i get a little bit focused like this this is where at home what i'd be doing now is i'd be consulting my good friend google and saying what color is a lovebird's eye so that i could color my image in at home more accurately um so i'm just gonna oh, look oh oh that looks better doesn't it so i thought you know what that's looking a bit flat and boring i don't like it a bit more green on the job over the top of the blue that's looking more like a tropical bird now i'm much more preferring the look of that and see how i'm able to get the light and the shade the difference between the dark and the light really build that up and you've got that lovely contrast between the two and a bit of iridescence in there and with his beak he's starting to look gorgeous now what i would do his little feet here i want them to be brown but remember tiny detail and i don't want to get in there with a brush and spoil it so this is where the fine tip of your marker comes into its own where i can go and do his little feet with the fine tip of the marker and that starts to come in there lovely now to pick all of that up i'm only going to do the one birdie and you're going to get this home and do the other birdie to match so that you can make it into a card so it's homework for you how fabulous is that so there we go that's how you can color one of the images once you've mastered done your beautiful ombre behind